Hey guys, Dan Lucart here with Barefoot Tesla. We're gonna look at a video today from FSD Beta 8.1, and this comes from Tesla owners, Silicon Valley, John. And this is one of the more fascinating videos that I've seen. We're gonna have two parts to this video. First is a um, misdetected stop sign, and then immediately after, a very interesting situation that I don't wanna give away yet. So let's kind of warm up with this stop sign. So let's look at the video as is. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning here. As we're approaching this intersection up on the right, I'm kind of on team car here. This is a lame intersection. What do you see right here? You see a red octagon, obviously a stop sign, which was occluded by the tree in um, a few frames ago. You know, you back up, we're not getting like the most amazing vision on this. The top portion of the sign is being covered up by the bottom portion of the tree. We also know the using GPS navigation that the car knows that there is a stop sign coming up. And as we approach, like I said, what do we see here? We see the word stop. We see what looks like a limit line, even though it's not there. That's just uh, the light creeping through the trees and a red octagon. And so the car at the last kind of second here, you know, we're approaching 25 miles an hour. It realizes, oh, I think I'm going to stop here. And it does a slightly late stop. I'm honestly as I mentioned, a little bit sympathetic for the stop because, you know, maybe the confidence interval that this was a stop wasn't so high approaching it, but you want to be extra cautious. You don't want to be running stop sign. And so what? So it stops at a, a stop that it shouldn't have. Big deal. Um, and I think this is how regulators can help. Like if you paint stop on the street and put an octagon that's red, I mean, there's going to be some misdetections here. Now, of course, can we get better detection on the sign? No doubt <clears throat> they have a database on this sign. The fact that it was partially obscured and in shadow, in mixed light rather, is going to be very difficult detection because it's going to, you know, if you pass this image through a, a CNN and it's identifying the edges, it's going to get all sorts of edges that aren't normally there on the sign. Like the first step is really edge detection in, in a CNN. So you're going to get all sorts of weird ed edges. And as you pass us through all the filters, it's not going to be very good. And then it sees, so it has probably a low, low confidence that this is a stop ahead sign and it sees the octagon. And as we've seen from other beta testers, just the sheer variety of stop signs that you can encounter. And then the stop on the ground, like don't, don't warn vehicles of stop ahead in this manner. Like, come up with a different way. Don't make it identical to the actual stop sign itself. Now, let's look ahead. It's going to go black for a second because I separated these two. As we continue on, this is so good. I love this portion of the video. So it sees the UPS truck, and it's going to go around the truck. I'm just going to narrate here. I'm not going to go back and uh, look at it because it kind of did the right policy. It sees the pedestrian. It slows down for the pedestrian. We approach a three-way stop sign. It approaches fine. It stops fine right at the appropriate spot. Now I'm going to be quiet in this section and observe what happens. So this is both great and bad at the same time. Like I'm, I'm equally on both. This is, I think, a problem that was both created and solved by the system. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> All right, back to full screen. So as the vehicle comes around the turn, it sees the parked UPS truck right here. So it's correctly labeling this as a vehicle that is both in my path and not going to move. But the unfortunate part about it is it has logic to swerve into the other lane and probably to detect a vehicle if it's there, but it shouldn't 
in my opinion, have done this so so zealously in this situation. And this could have gone a lot worse because we don't have, it's going around a curve. So I think this is kind of like the partitioning of the logic. This would be an argument against the, the segregated nature of a system like this. I do think this can be solved with a, with a, with a hack, with some sort of heuristic, like some sort of handwritten code that says, okay, if you can't, if the road is curving beyond X amount of degrees, don't pass a vehicle right away, like kind of creep out or whatever. Different, some sort of logic that would prevent this. So I think once it decided to go out, that it's okay. Like it did the right thing. It slammed on the brakes here. It shouldn't have done it. But I don't think if the pedestrian wasn't there that it wouldn't have gone. Why? Because I've seen other cases where it's swerving out to pass um, either a vehicle or there's a bike in the bike lane and it's providing extra caution, but it literally forces the other car off the road. No. Okay. I'm going to change it to go home now. And then now. You see, it goes, you see that? It goes into the lane. Uh -huh. We're hitting, we're, yeah, bump, yeah, yeah. we're on the lane to, to give space to them. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm a new channel, just kind of testing it out. If I have a lot of likes and subscribes, I'll continue to make more and more videos. Thanks, guys.